Throwing in Pikmin is pretty important. It's used to kill enemies, solve puzzles, and to reach areas Olimar himself can't. It's a vital part in every single one of the games. So what if we took it away? Would it still be possible to beat the game without it? Can you beat Pikmin without throwing a single Pikmin? Well, today we're gonna find out, because I'll be trying to get every single part in the game without using a single throw. Enjoy. So the rules for this run are pretty self-explanatory. I just can't press A and throw a Pikmin. That's it. That's the only rule. And on day one, it hardly comes into play at all. I just missed out on 4 Pikmin because I can't collect these 2 pellets. But other than that, I move the bots and grab the engine just like normal. On day 2, we grab the external fuel dynamo and come across our first obstacle, this wall. The only way to break down this wall is by using bombs. And the only way to use bombs is to throw Pikmin. They won't drop any other way. So we're gonna have to get a little creative. I leave three Pikmin holding bombs near the wall. I then get this Bulborb's attention and lead him towards the Pikmin. He eats one, they all go boom, and so does the wall. And honestly, that was the part I was worried about. Now that that's out of our way, I feel like the rest of the level will be pretty easy. Oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll deal with that later. I then use the same method to break down this wall, but instead of using a Bulborb, I use Shear Grubs. Boom. On day 3, we have to answer a very important question. How the hell are we going to get the Whimsical Radar? It sits on this ledge, just out of Olimar's reach. The only way of getting it is by throwing 20 Pikmin up there and having them carry it off the ledge. So on day 3, we already have to use our first throw. Nah, I'm totally joking. I think it's time we introduce the move that might make this run possible. And that move is lying down. And no, this time, I'm not joking. This may be the most broken move in the entire game. And with it, we can perform two very important tricks. The first is the out of bounds clip. If an object is placed close enough to a wall and you lie down in between the wall and that object, the object will push Olimar directly out of bounds. This can be done with enemy bodies or pellets, it doesn't matter. The second trick is object nudging. If you run at an object and lie down when you come in contact with it, Olimar will nudge that object forward. The tricky part about doing this is that you have to let go of the joystick right before you lie down, or Olimar will just pop right back up, making your nudge way less effective. And again, this can be done on enemy bodies, pellets, and yes, even ship parts. So by using these two traits, getting the whimsical radar without throwing is actually possible. We can lead this dwarf ball blurb over here, kill it, and then use the pellets to clip out of bounds. And for some reason, even though you're never supposed to be able to get up here, the ground has collision and you can walk on it. In fact, we can just walk right on over to the whimsical radar and start nudging it. And nudging is a very slow process, especially when you're as bad at it as I am. As you can see, I struggle letting go of the joystick as I lie down causing me to pop right back up. But even still, I'm able to knock it off the ledge even though it takes me half the day to do it. I then end the day by grabbing the extraordinary bolt, which obviously requires no throws, moving us on to day four. On day four, we grab the Nova Blaster, which only requires use of the C stick. We then head over to the Shock Absorber, which is normally obtained by throwing Pikmin on this ledge and then walking around through this water and grabbing them. But since we can't do that, I have to brute force it. We actually only end up losing two reds, which is kind of shocking. We then reach the shock absorber and sneak it past this guy. Now, we could have just waited and came back to grab this part once we had blues, but where's the fun in that? On day five, we go over and kill the puff stool. And I definitely thought we'd have to use some throws to beat this guy because you're normally supposed to knock him over, then throw Pikmin on his butt to do damage. But if you just swarm him, Pikmin will stick to his body and continue attacking even when he's flipped over, making him completely beatable without throws. We then grab the automatic gear, which requires only the use of the C-Stick, and then I spend the rest of the day building up my blue numbers. 
On day six, we go and grab every easily accessible part in the forest navel. The number one ionium jet, gravity jumper, anti-dioxin filter, analog computer, and space float. Every single one of them obtainable without a single throw. On day seven, we tackle something that I've been putting off for a while, the BD Longlades fight. We head over and we're blocked again by another stone wall. But we can use the fire to ignite the bombs and destroy it without any throws. But then we come to the real problem, the fight itself. There is unfortunately no way of beating this fight without throwing. BD Longlades only takes damage on one part of its body, this round middle section. And the only way to reach that middle section is with a throw. So unfortunately for the first time in this run, we'll have to use a throw. But the question is, how many? Well, the first thing I tried was just throwing one Pikmin and hoping somehow he wouldn't get knocked off and could kill BD. And obviously that wasn't gonna work, and he got knocked off immediately. But I thought I'd at least try. I then tried throwing one Pikmin on, and then when he fell off, I threw another one on. The idea was to do this until he died. But it seemed like with only one or two Pikmin on him, he would shake them off almost right away every time. I'm not sure if this is part of his code or something to stop you from cheesing him like this, but either way, it wasn't working. So my only option was to spam him with Pikmin. But it had to be the absolute least amount of Pikmin required to kill him. And I had no idea what that number was going to be. So I just kept trying the fight over and over and over again, until I got the kill with the least amount of throws possible. And after two hours of attempts, I think I got it. I start off the fight by throwing 18 Pikmin on him, and then just watch until almost all of them are shaken off. All but this little guy who delivers the final blow. And like I said, after hours of attempts, this was the lowest I could get, 18. Maybe there's a better way of doing this, and if you know one, let me know in the comments below, I'd genuinely be curious to know. But 18 is the lowest I could get. So that's what we're going with for this video. After BD, we head over to grab the Libra. And normally you would need a minimum of 30 throws to get this part. 15 to get yellows up on this ledge, and then another 15 to get them on this one. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use our old friend, the Out of Bounds clip. So I start by luring these Shearwades across the map, until we reach this area past the bridge. Then, after many attempts, I use its body to clip up on this ledge. And, unlike the Out of Bounds in the Forest of Hope, walking on this ledge is super sketchy. If you walk on the wrong area, you'll just get blasted off into the void. After many restarts, I was able to make it up to the second ledge. And then you have to hit this very specific area to clip up where the Libra is. And if you don't, once again, you'll be sent out into the void. So, after many attempts, I was finally able to make it to the Libra. Now, you have to understand, getting up here took me forever. So, I really wanted to get this part down before the end of the day, because I did not want to do this again. But with my shitty nudging skills, and only a quarter of the day left, I wasn't sure if it was possible. But after what felt like an eternity of nudging, I was finally able to knock it down just before the end of the day. On day 9, we head back to the Forest of Hope, and head for the Geiger counter. I tried using this bulb orb to kill these Pikmin so I could blow up this wall, but no matter what I did, he wouldn't get close enough. He would hit a certain area and then just turn around. So I had to lure some Shear Grubs from where you normally find the Extraordinary Bolt, and use them to kill the Pikmin. We then came across this box, which normally would require you to throw 10 blues up on this ledge to move it. but. If you leave a bunch of blues in the water and bring in some reds, the blues will try to save the red Pikmin by throwing them up on land. Which just happens to be the ledge near this box, giving us just enough reds to move it without a single throw. We then easily kill the Snagret by just swarming it when its head pops up. We then come to the Armored Cannon Beetle, who would definitely take some throws to kill, but thankfully we can just ignore him and sneak the part right by. On day 10, nothing too exciting happens. I break down this stone wall using the bull bear and then grab the gluon drive and the massage machine. Both are super easy and require no throws. Day 11 starts off with more of the same. I grab two more easy parts, the zincronium rotor and the pilot seat. 
both being obtained with zero throws. I then use this bull bear to destroy this wall on the other side of the distant spring. And then it was time to get the repair type bolt. And the repair type bolt is a problem, because it requires you to get 20 Pikmin up on this ledge. Which would require 20 throws, and that's something we can't do. But something we can do is make use of this blowhog. When a blowhog blows Pikmin, they can be blown really high. So high in fact that they can be blown out of bounds. And this out of bounds area right here is overlooking the ledge we need to get them on. So if we could get a blowhog to blow 20 Pikmin up on this out of bounds area, and then have them drop down on this ledge, we could get them to the repair type bolt without any throws. But this was easier said than done. I wanted the Pikmin up on this ledge, but most of the time they would be blown anywhere but. I tried getting them in this little corridor so they would blow off the wall into the ledge, but it only worked some of the time. And even when I got them up there, it was hard to maneuver them on the ledge without them falling off. But eventually I got lucky and a bunch just got blown up there. I then maneuvered them to the ledge below, and then to the repair type bolt, bringing it down without a single throw. On day 12, we go back to the impact site, and I try to lure this Mamuta over to blow up the wall. But just like with the bulb orb in the Forest of Hope, it can't actually reach the wall, and there are no other enemies around that I can get to eat the Pikmin. So I get creative and create a chain of bombs leading back to the wall that the Mamuta can actually reach. And thankfully, it actually works. And now comes the tricky part. Getting the Positron Generator out of this pearly clamp clamp. Normally, you would use blues to throw them on the generator and knock it free. But since we can't throw, we're gonna have to do things a little differently. If you take a Pikmin type that can't swim and bring it over to the clamp clamp, the Pikmin will treat it like a piece of land and jump up on it to save itself. And once it's on the clam, it'll automatically start attacking the generator. All without a single throw. But once again, actually doing this is not so easy. The Pikmin have a really hard time getting up on the clam. I would bring a group of 20 and I'd be lucky to get one or two on. And I don't know if this is true or not, but it almost seemed like I had to push them up there with Olimar's body. Like the Pikmin were using Olimar's body in the same way I would use a pellet to clip out of bounds. Again, I don't know if this is true or not, but either way we lost a bunch of Pikmin. 91 in total. But we did end up getting the generator and completing the impact site, all without throwing once. On day 13, we go back to the Forest of Hope to grab the last remaining part, the Sagittarius. To get the Sagittarius, you need to build these two bridges. One you can build normally, but the second you need to throw Pikmin to build it. We could theoretically throw one Pikmin up here and just hope he finishes the bridge by the end of the day, but for one, I don't even know if that's possible, and two, I don't want to use any more throws. So we're going to try something else. If we use the same out of bounds clip we used on day 3, but instead of going right we go left, we can actually walk all the way over to where the Sagittarius is. And with some well placed nudges we can knock it off this ledge and then get it with some blues completing the Forest of Hope without a single throw. On day 14, we head over towards the Bowsprit, and unlike the Radiation Canopy in the Forest of Hope, we actually have to kill the Cannon Beetle to obtain it. Which means for the second time in this run, we're going to have to use some throws. Because the only way to damage the Cannon Beetle is to hit its back. And the only way to open up its back is to throw Pikmin in this hole. Luckily, that's the only throws we're going to need. I was under the assumption that I would need to use throws to damage its back as well, but with some precise swarming you can actually damage him without throws. So the question becomes, can I kill him with a single opening of his back? And the answer is no. I tried this so many times and the furthest I ever got was half his health bar. It's really difficult damaging him without throws. Most of the time your Pikmin just do no damage. In the rare times they do, it'll be like a quarter of his health bar. If I came close, I would maybe say it's possible doing it in one cycle, but like I said, after trying many times, the absolute best I got was half, so I just don't think it is. But since it is possible getting him to half HP, it means it's possible killing him with two throws. Which is what I end up doing. I use one throw, damage him to half, and then use the other to finish the job. Which brings our total to 20 throws so far. 
And unfortunately, it doesn't get better from here. Because the next part on our list is the interstellar radio, which happens to be inside of this blowhog. And since it levitates off the ground, to attack it, we're gonna need to throw. The good thing is, with enough Pikmin thrown on it, it will drop to the ground, allowing us to swarm it. We just need to find out exactly what that number of Pikmin is. And after doing some testing, it turns out that number is 10. 10 Pikmin will cause the blowhog to come crashing down to the ground. And I actually messed up here and threw 12 Pikmin instead of 10, and only noticed after the fact when I was editing the footage. But since you actually only need 10 throws, that's all I'll be counting towards the total. Which happens to be 30 now. And I believe this is the lowest amount needed to kill him. He has the same problem as Beatty. If you throw 1 or 2 Pikmin on him, he'll shake it off immediately. Like here, I throw 5 or 6, and he shakes them off before they even do a quarter of his health bar. So I would probably need to use over 20 throws to kill him this way. On day 15, we have the UV lamp set in our sights. A part that would traditionally take 10 throws to obtain. But if we carefully lure this sheerward through the maze and kill it right before this cliff face, we can use its body to clip up on the ledge, allowing us to nudge it down this perfectly placed slide, obtaining the part without a single throw. After that, we moved on to the number 2 Ionium Jet. Normally, you would need to throw 15 Pikmin up on this ledge and then 15 across this gap to get this part, combining for 30 throws in total. But there's actually a difficult trick you can perform that can get 15 Pikmin up on this ledge using only one throw. The first thing you need to do is aggro a snitch bug, then lead him over to this ledge. Then toss one Pikmin on him, knocking him down. Then swarm him with your Pikmin, and then watch as he flies back up and shakes him off onto the ledge. Allowing you to use the whistle and the Z-stick to grab the part. And when I said this trick is difficult, I meant it. I tried this for hours, and the best I got was getting like 10 Pikmin up on the ledge, panicking, and then whistling them off by mistake. And at this point, I was done. I had already spent way too long on this run, and trying this over and over and over again just melted my brain. But I will show you footage of a speedrunner named Okage pulling off the trick just so you know that it is possible. All with just one throw. Bringing our total number of throws up to 31 with only two parts remaining. And it was time to tackle one of those last two parts, the Kronos Reactor. Now normally you need 80 throws to obtain this part. 20 to get 20 blue Pikmin up on this ledge, 20 more to turn them into yellows, another 20 to throw them all on the beach, and then a final 20 to get them on the ledge and grab the part. But there's no way I was wasting 80 throws on one part. So we called over our old friend the snitch bug and killed him using a single throw. We then used the pellets he dropped to clip up on this ledge. And now all we needed to do was nudge the part off and we were done with the distant spring. And we had already done this multiple times in the run so I didn't think it'd be a problem. Turns out I was wrong. I haven't mentioned this in the video yet because it hasn't really come up, but it's fairly common for parts to get stuck when you're trying to nudge them. I'm not exactly sure on the specifics, but basically the floor in Pikmin is made up of a bunch of invisible triangles. And parts don't like moving between different triangles. They want to stay on the triangle they are already located at. So it's relatively easy moving apart if it stays on the same triangle. But as soon as you reach the border of the triangle the part is already on, and a new triangle, it gets really difficult. And there must have been one of these borders right on the corner of this ledge. Because I could always get the part to this corner, but it would always get stuck. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it unstuck. I tried nudging from different angles, I tried laying down longer, I tried nudging it with small bumps, nothing worked. It was almost as if the part had hit an invisible wall and it wasn't letting it by. And it kind of had. It had hit one of these borders between triangles. And I didn't know it at the time, but the only way to cross one of these borders was with a really big nudge. And after hours of attempts, I finally got one big enough to push the part past one of these borders, knocking it loose and off the ledge. All while only using one throw, raising our total to 32. And with that, we had completed the distant spring. And we only had one part remaining, the secret safe in the final trial. And the first thing we did in the final trial was move this box. Normally, you're supposed to throw 10 red Pikmin up on this ledge and then direct them towards the boss. 
But if we make use of our blue life card friends again, we don't have to do that. And we can just take our yellows and move the bots without a single throw. And we can use the same strategy again to get some yellows on this ledge and grab some bombs. Unfortunately, we do need to use three throws to break down this stone wall. There's just no way to get bombs across without throwing. And we can't use our lifeguard strategy, because as soon as a yellow Pikmin falls in water, it drops its bomb. So we're forced to throw three times, bringing our total throws to 35. And that's where it would stay. We had now opened the way to Emperor Wolblats, and defeating him was easy. We just had to stun him with bombs and attack his feet. It could all be done without a single throw. And with Emperor Bulblats defeated, we collected the last part, beating Pikmin with only 35 throws. Now, maybe there could have been some throws saved in the BD and Blowhog fights, but other than that, I feel like this is the lowest amount of throws required to beat the game. And if you don't think so, try for yourself and see if you can do better. I'd be really interested to see how this number could be lowered. And if you're looking for some more Pikmin challenge runs, take a look at these bad boys.